Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Yes, today you're going to work with Unky Joe. It's another a day in the life of. So let's get behind the wheel of the car and, and go. So I know I've been promising this day in the life video for quite a while. Philip Saunders, this video is for you. Uh, Philip has been badgering me. No, not really. He sent me one email. He said, wait, what happened? What happened to a day in the life video? Well, I'm about to tell you what happened. Things don't always go to plan. And that was the case with this day in the life video. So this client, I went out to um, uh, just a little backstory on them. Uh, we've got Spectrum as their internet provider. We got them first uh, because it was all that was available. And then uh, AT&T came in and put a fiber drop in. And so uh, what I was tasked with going out here was getting that AT&T modem set up. Now, when the tech dropped it off, I wasn't ready to uh, and installed it. I wasn't ready to set up their, their fiber connection. So he left me some instructions on how to get into the modem and uh, how to make changes and whatnot and so that's what I did when I went out to this client site so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you the footage of me trying to get it set up and then then I'll come back and we'll talk about it a little bit more all right so here we are in the wiring closet and as you can see it's awfully warm in here temperature is going down we opened the door and turned the AC back on evidently this building the AC turns off on the weekends and for some reason, this server room has not got its own air conditioner. But anyway, so here is the uh, AT&T equipment that they left me uh, so I can hook into it. I need to get to this Dell down here and do a RAM upgrade on it. because This is their main virtualization server. So that's what I'm going to do today is do the upgrade to the RAM. But I want to get this PFSense's Dell out of the way. We're going to pull it out of the rack because it's just literally sitting on top of the of the Dell that does the virtualization. I've got to reconfigure PFSense anyway. It'd be a good time to open that unit up and clean it out. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so I've got the uh, R210 out. And I've got this. Hopefully this won't flip. This should just open right up. Alright, so let's uh, go ahead and pull it out a little bit more. Now, this one does have a DVD drive in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to order an SSD adapter kit for this thing and come back and put an SSD in here for the boot drive. Uh, it already has SSD drives in here, so I'm taking that baffle off, and that is what can uh, uh, covers the RAM. So right now the RAM has three DIMMs in each bank, and each DIMM, they're all in the white, so let's see, I think these are 8 gig. No, these are only 4 gig uh, DIMMs. ECC, there's the, there's the uh, sticker for them. They're Hynix. So I'm going to end up replacing these. Uh, see, so 4 times 3, 12, 12. So I got 24 gig of RAM. Um, 12 on each CPU. And I want to bump this up to like, oh, I don't know, 60 gig, I think is what I brought. I think I brought eight of them. So I have to figure out how to put these into this unit um, to, get, uh, to get the correct memory configuration. And I think it's on the panel out here is how you configure it. I think you fill, I think you fill A1, bank A1, 2, and 3 first. And then four, five, uh, let's see, then A4, A5, A6, and then A7, A8, A9. So I think that's what it's telling us on the, uh, for the RAM. So the RAM that I brought, I think I left it in here in my little cubby. Yeah, the RAM I brought is no I took it into the server room my bad the RAM I brought 
is right here. Sorry about that. So, this came out of my other Dell R710. So there it is. And I know I took a picture of it with my other phone. So these are these are 8 gig 2R by 4 PC 12800 ECC RAM and I've got so I got 32 32 so I should have 64 gig of RAM. But let me go back and check my notes to see where to put exactly where to put these modules uh, so that we have the best memory configuration. All right, so as you can see, we now have 64 gig of RAM in that Dell. And this unit has dual uh, Xeon X5560 processors, so this unit is still ideal for virtual machines. And I have all the VMs running off of SSD drives, so success number one. We've got the RAM upgraded on the Dell R710. Now let's go take a look at the firewall, see how clean or dirty it is, and then let's get it set up with its new IP addresses. On procedure, I'm going to keep the lid off until we are finalized with it. What I want to do now is switch over to, and you can hear it firing up, I want to switch over to, uh, to my AT&T uh, router here and make sure I've got, uh, I've got throughput on my system and everything is working okay. So we're going to go get that booted up and wait for this uh, to come up. It is giving me a flashing indicator probably that because the cover is off and it's probably going to make a lot of noise. But as you can see, the temperature is steadily dropping in here, so I must have gotten the AC turned back on. Okay, so we'll let this run, and uh, we'll try to come into the desktop see what's going on with it. Sad to report, I had zero success, and pardon the whine from the computer. I'm doing an upgrade on the Kiosense firewall now. I've given up on the AT&T router. The one they've given us is the uh, 320 model 500. It's different than the one we had at the other building. The one we had at the other building, they just did IP pass through. We didn't have to worry about anything. When they set this one up, they didn't set it up. And I don't understand how the IP pass through works well enough to do it. And of course, it's a Sunday, so they have no tech support even for business clients, which I did not know. Um, so uh, this is going to have to wait till Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to do a little research, and then I'll have to come back one evening, uh, hopefully when they still have tech support open, and reconfigure that so that it will uh, it will work and uh, pass through the public IPs. But we don't want that router doing anything. We don't want it to be in a firewall or a gate. We're just, just we just want it to be in bridge mode. But you can't you cannot put these AT&T, Nokia, uh, GW, uh, BGW. 320s into that mode anymore so so that was my first visit my initial visit to this client and I wasn't able to get the um, to get the modem set up this is a newer uh, Nokia modem is what they're using and at the previous location this client had AT&T they had a different modem and we just simply put it in bridge mode and all was well with the world. Well, this new modem does not have bridge mode. You have to put it in what is called cascade mode. And unfortunately, that is just really above my pay grade. The other problem I had is I went out over a holiday weekend. We, we have a holiday in the, in the States called Labor Day. And I went out over the weekend. And so, of course, when I needed help from AT&T, they were having enjoying their holiday as well, so nobody was available to ha to help me. So um, you're going to see the next part of this video is I'm going to go back. But the folks at AT and T, once I did go back, uh, they were great. I got them on the phone. They got me. They walked me through. The guy went ahead and said, "No, you need to put this modem in what's called cascade mode." He took care of it for me uh, and got it up and running. And it was then that I noticed we had another problem, and that was that we were not achieving gigabit speed. Now, I made the tech aware of this, and he said, hey, uh, put connect a laptop directly up to the modem and see if you can't get uh, gigabit speed that way.
Well, I didn't have a modem. Or I'm sorry, I didn't have a laptop with me. I don't like lugging that thing around if I don't have to. But I did have an edge router light with me. And um, so that's what I plugged in. And I plugged in the edge router light and I configured it and boom, we got gigabit speed immediately. So the router these folks have is PFSense router and it has Broadcom NICs built into it. So I'd never experienced a problem with Broadcom NICs before using PFSense, but okay. Now I also had with me my little uh, unit, the little $200 PFSense box I bought off of Amazon and I'll, I'll put the model number down here below so you can see it. That one would also not, it would only, it would, it would max out at 100 by 100 megabyte. It wouldn't go gigabit. And um, so again, I, I plugged this little Edge Router X in, and, or Edge Router Lite, and it worked like a charm. However, it doesn't, it doesn't have the functionality PFSense does, or the flexibility. So I left it like that, and then I went out on a third trip, which you're about to see. Uh, so uh, come along with me again. We'll go out uh, back to this client, and I'll tell you what I tried to do uh, to correct this issue. All right, so here we are back at the client location. Another day, another dollar. First things first, I got the coffee brewing. And uh, there's my lovely server room. Okay, so today I'm gonna be working on this Dell R710 again. I'm gonna replace this DVD drive with an SSD drive. The problem with this Dell is, is that I have an old spinning SAS hard drive, Cheetah, and one of them, they're in a RAID 1 array, and this drive here has failed. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two drives, and I'm going to put an SSD in here in the CD-ROM tray. Meantime, though, I need to fix the PFSense firewall, which is this Dell R210 Model 2, as you can see right there, because for whatever reason, I'm not getting gigabit speeds with AT&T with this router so I'm here today to figure out why and I did try Bob Carpenter made a suggestion that I replace that I go with a switch in between the AT&T modem on the yellow and the red which is the Broadcom network card here in this PFSense box that did not work it didn't make any difference what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put an SSD drive in here and reload PFSense from scratch. Reload their configuration, see if the problem goes away. I don't expect that it will, but uh, in the event that it doesn't, I've come prepared. I brought a dual PCI Express Intel based NIC, which hopefully will resolve the issue. If not, let me see, I got my stuff in here. Yeah, here it is. So it, here's the Intel NIC. I'm going to be putting in there if I can get it out of the bag. So there you go. It's an Intel server adapter. Got that. Here's my solid state drives that I'm going to be putting in. And my second HDD caddy right there. And then I got a plethora of four gigabyte DIMMs to try and bring the RAM in that PFSense box up to eight gigs. So right now I'm going to go grab a cup, a cup of coffee, go use the restroom, then I'll start tearing into that server. All right, so here we are in the inside of the Dell R210. I am going to replace, these are the spinning drives in here. I've already backed up the configuration, so I'm going to put the SSD in here. I'm going to see take this cover off it's an air baffle as well and I'm gonna see if I don't have some dims that can go in here and upgrade this to 8 gig CPUs here here's the Broadcom Nix right here I've decided instead of taking any chances I'm gonna go ahead and install this Intel Nick here I've got this slot right here I can install it into I'm gonna put it in here and not take any chances. We know the Broadcom's not going to work because it's not working now, so there's no sense in thinking that a clean load will fix that. So let me get all the hardware rejiggered around and I'll give you another shot of it. I've got the SSD drive installed right here. It's mounted. 
And then like an idiot, uh, for some reason I thought this was a small height bus. And I put this bracket on this network card. And of course, it's a full height slot. So, as you can see, as you can see there, I've had to take the bracket off just so I can get the card in there. And I'll have to be extra careful plugging these network cards in uh, just to make sure they're connected right. And then I'll come next time I come out here, I'll bring the correct bracket. So for now, though, um, we're ready to put the back on. This also has an iDRAC, as you can see it right here. This is the iDRAC card. So the beauty of this server is I can uh, connect up remotely to it. So we're going to put the baffle back on. I'll put the lid back on when I'm done. I don't like to jinx myself. So I'm going to go put this back in the rack and plug it in. And then power it up and we'll get to, we'll get to working on it. Alright, so you can probably hear this thing as I'm walking toward the server room. Now I brought my PSSense install USB with me. That's this one right here, PSSense. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the power button in until it powers off. And we'll put this in the front USB. And then we should be able to go over to the PC with the iDRAC on it and uh, get PF Sense loaded. So I don't know that I'm going to get any footage of that. I may. Uh, you'll just have to come along and, and see if I do. Alright, so let's go get PF Sense installed. Alright, I guess we just let it film here. Sorry, it's a little loud. I have the cover off. So uh, I couldn't get the iDRAC to work properly. I don't have the proper machine. So I'm going to go into the BIOS here, sitting on the desktop, go into inter integrated devices. And I'm going to turn the uh, embedded NIC 1 and 2, I'm going to disable all ports off. I'm wondering I'm wondering Oh, okay. So you see the settings here, so I'm just turn them off. Escape, escape, I'm gonna save changes. And then it should boot to the USB key. And it's calming down now because I have the button pushed. So it should boot off of my USB key in here. And I should be able to start the install of PF Sense. There we go, boot multi-user. I'm gonna let the lid come off again. I ramp up the fans. Yep, there they go again. Alright, so there you go. Um, the RAM did not work. The RAM that I have here did not work, so it's obviously the wrong type of RAM. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, PSSense set up. And I'll get it back in the ramp, uh, rack and uh, we'll see how it works. Alright, so it's much quieter now. i got the cover on this thing. And as you can see, we've got it up and running now. Well, I've got the base of it up and running. So I'm ready to connect it back up to the LAN and make sure and then restore the config file. And there you go, I'm getting a ping. So I know it's working, uh, or at least I'm able to connect via a local IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, We'll go ahead and shut this down now. So the shutdown is 6 to halt. So enter 6. And I want to proceed. And then it should power down and we'll go put it back in the rack. Bring it back up, hook it up, and then start getting it reconfigured. Okay, might as well get some footage of me actually doing some work. So this is the uh, second HDD caddy and a Kingston. 120 gig SSD. It's more than enough for a server operating system. And this is the caddy I get. I'll put the description in the show notes. So you just basically. Oh, of course it doesn't want to go in. Slide it in at a bit of an angle. 
okay it's in there now and I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of screws in the bottom they even send you this nifty little screwdriver so um, I know it's a Ziploc bag but when you can't feel all oh, these sh these scissors are about as dull as look at that those scissors are horrible should have brought my sharpener now I don't know that this is gonna work because these are not, it's not a magnetic tip, so I'll use my screwdriver. And uh, we'll, put, uh, we'll put some screws in here just to hold it in. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But we'll just put some screws in to hold it so everybody can feel better about it. Because I know if I don't put all four screws in, somebody's going to yell at me. So we'll put all four screws in. So the next guy who <coughs> who does my job will have a hard time. Okay, and then I didn't get all the I didn't get all the plastic off. Okay, so there it is. SSD is mounted. Now I also want to put the bezel on. So I just line it up like this. it snaps so now I get the bezel on okay. works pretty good doesn't it all right so you want to come with me into the server room all right well we didn't get the uh, we didn't get the firewall resolved so I went ahead and removed just so you know I removed my knit card out of there here's the firewall we'll put it back but it goes on top of this other Dell where this thing is going to go so I don't want it uh, I don't want it in there right now so here's my here's my Dell. This is the one we upgraded the RAM in. And mind you, it's been a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, I forget that's plugged in. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been out here. So uh, I'm gonna not do this one-handed because that would be kind of silly, wouldn't it? Now normally I'd go behind me and unplug all the cables, but since this is I'm just dealing with something at the front. I didn't do that. So, there's what I need to remove is the CD DVD ROM. And basically, there's a data cable back here. Now, if your unit does not have a, a DVD CD ROM, you won't be able to do this. And then, what you do is you push this little button, and the drive comes right out. Now, what you're supposed to do is take the screws out of here and put them into this thing on the back. The problem is these holes don't line up. It's been my experience. So all I do is just go ahead and insert the drive back in and then we'll plug that, uh, we'll plug this cable back in. Let me do that. Okay, so now it's, so now it's plugged back in. Now I'm not going to do anything else to this except boot this server back up and make sure I can connect to the iDRAC because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the stuff I need to on here i.e. loading Windows Server 2019 onto this SSD I'm going to do it remotely and you're going to watch me do it uh, that'll complete this part of the video so I'm going to go ahead and button this back up boot this server back up make sure it comes up and then uh, it'll boot off of this single drive here and then when I go to reload it, I can tell through the iDirect to start booting from this uh, SSD on the SATA port. So, yeah, that'll be good. Let me put it back together. Not a whole bunch more success, but, I, you know, each time I visit this client, I get a little bit more done. So, uh, as you saw in the video, I was not able to get the RAM upgrade to work. That's okay. 4 gig of RAM is perfectly fine for a PFSense firewall. I did switch out the Broadcom NIC for an Intel that I had. You saw that I brought the wrong bracket on that PCI Express card, but I did plug it in and it made no change. It still did not work. Now, Bob Carpenter, our moderator, uh, and I, I call him a good friend, and he's very knowledgeable on PFSense. Um, he said, take a, take a gigabit switch and put it between the modem 
and the PFSense firewall and see if that connects at gigabit speed. It, it, it did not, but it was it was a great idea. And I tried a couple of different Netgear switches that I had there. Uh, neither one of them would lock in. One thing I did observe, though, so uh, I, I tore apart the PFSense firewall, put it all back to standard, uh, and you know did a clean install of PFSense. And I went ahead and rebooted the AT&T modem. I power cycled it, pulled, it, pulled the power out from the wall, and plugged it back in. And when it came back up, and PFSense came back up, even with the Broadcom NICs, all of a sudden I had gigabit speed. I was getting 700 by 500, so uh, which is you know close to gigabit speed. And I thought, oh, okay, that's all it was all this time. It was just a freaking modem needed to be rebooted. And then uh, I made some changes to PFSense, restored the customer's configuration. And once I did that and rebooted, problem. It went back down to 100 by 100. So I thought I had found the problem. Maybe it was the client's configuration of of PF Sense, something I had configured was wrong. So I wiped the box again, reloaded PF Sense one more time from scratch, followed the same procedure I did before, which was to reboot the the uh, AT&T modem, and then plug the uh, plug the PF Sense back in with a clean configuration, and you no, know, hundred by hundred. Remember, there's a motto: give it to Unky Joe, and if anyone can break it, it will be him. That's been the story of my whole life. So. It's still broken. It's still only 100 by 100. Um, I gave up for the day and, and, and licked my wounds and came back home. And so now I'm going to take my Odyssey uh, single board computer, the one that I use for my firewall. And, and in, in the meantime, I've also gotten gigabit fiber here at my home just so I could test all these things. Every one of these devices, with the exception of the Dell, which I did not bring home with me from the client, works on my gigabit it detects it just fine so i'm going to take the odyssey uh single board computer unit out there that i've been using as my pf sense firewall we're going to plug it in we're going to see what happens if that doesn't work then i'm going to need to get a hold of at&t and we're going to need to uh, get that modem replaced uh, it's the only other thing i can think of um, unless there is some setting that they're just they didn't flip the switch but uh, what ge what gives me pause is the fact that after a couple of kicks in the pants with the AT&T modem, it did achieve gigabit speed for a short period of time until I rebooted things and then it went back down again. So that's what leads me to believe it may be the modem is the problem. But I'm going to give AT&T the benefit of the doubt before I make them dispatch another tech out there. And the other problem is bringing the client down during the workday because that's when AT&T is available, uh, their support. And I hate doing that. So I could put them on their backup internet connection, and uh, but that's a huge pain. Uh, so I'll have, to, I'll have to think about this long and hard. But I'm going to go out there this weekend again and replace it with the, uh, the Odyssey single board computer. We'll see what happens. So wish me luck on that front. Now, some of you are probably out there screaming at your screen going, did you try the speed and duplex settings, setting it from auto to manual? Yes, we, we covered all that. Look, I've got 20 plus years experience. Uh, I did try all those things and unfortunately it just, it actually made things worse. Like I said, I'll go back out there this weekend with the, with the Odyssey computer, a single board computer. And we'll try that and see what happens. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this edge router with me again. Uh, we may just set it up temporarily to get them gigabit speed, but uh, never say die, right? But anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. And if you have any uh, solution to this problem, or if you've seen this before, put it down in the comments section. We love your comments. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And Hit that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined. We take Patreon and PayPal and the YouTube join function. We also have our Discord server up. Thanks to the hard work of a bunch of guys who have helped me. And we have uh, a Minecraft server up in beta for those of you that are interested. We're going to limit that 
Minecraft server to 15 whitelisted people. So if you'd like to help us test that, we're, I think we're three or four users away from, from that 15 user limit, but just uh, send me an email, Playhouse at gmail.com. And uh, if we have room, I'll get you on the list uh, for the Minecraft server. So please don't forget to uh, come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.